Hi, I'm Xenia, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I thought I'd film a somewhat different video from what I usually do. I am a tech copywriter, so I write for IT sector, as you probably have guessed from the title of this video, and I thought it would be fun to let you guys follow me along on my typical day, although it's not like not exactly 100% typical because usually my mornings start with uh, walking my dog cookie, but today my boyfriend is doing that, so I have a bit more time in the morning. Uh, plus, I'm filming this at the end of April, so technically a lot of my work is already done, but you never know, <laughs> it can get pretty crazy pretty quickly, like in an instant. So yeah, uh, I, like I said, I'm a tech copywriter. So I've been doing it for a bit over than four years. And I guess you can technically say that I'm overemployed, although I don't have like multiple full-time projects, but I do work on several projects simultaneously all the time. So yeah, if you want to hear me talk about overemployment as a concept, I can, uh, I am thinking of doing that. So let me know if you're interested. And uh, yeah, so my work day is usually split among multiple different projects, although I personally prefer to, you know, have those days when I focus on one and then the next day I focus on the other, but, but of course, you know, I get requests here and there, so I have to, you know, work on <laughs> everything at once, more or less. So uh, you've seen me earlier today just, you know, doing my little morning routine. I've written down a, like, rough to-do list for today, although I don't follow it religiously, but I try to accomplish the things that I set for myself, and the success here for me lies in not planning too much, you know, I have maybe four or five things um, in total, two or three of them that I absolutely have to do, and then if something else gets done, awesome, if not, well, whatever, and I kind of let the rest of the day, like, you know, I don't create a 10-15 um, points <laughs> to-do list because I find that there's always something coming up and you end up doing something else instead, and then if your to-do list looks quite sad, then you get upset about yourself and stuff like that, so that's not cool. Right, so now it's 9-ish a.m. and I think I'm gonna work on my project A. This is the one where I am, um, I guess my job most of the time, like, I don't know, 90% of the time, I write long read articles for corporate blogs or for some other portals where the company is, you know, posting their content. Um, yeah, so that takes the majority of my time and I really love doing that, it's the best. But also uh, for some projects I do work on emails, I help with the website landings or just general website content and also of course I do uh, social media posts for them but you know it's a B2B sector in tech so it's you know you don't have to post multiple times a day or even multiple times a week so it's really just a few posts a month and that's not so much and uh, my project A <laughs> is exactly like that I have to do like a full stack of content for them and today I want to just cross out a few bits here and there like confirm articles with managers um, update the products because uh, they did some upgrades with platforms and things like that and there is a distributor portal where I need to update all those products which is which sounds boring, it, it kind of is, but that's okay. And just do a few bits and bobs. And uh, later on, I'll start working with the other projects. But okay, let me grab my coffee and let's get started. You a body giving I'm just saying I'm a mule. But you ain't even flexing. And you cool, tatted it up, cover wounds, different vibe, you know ain't proof, but you ain't even flexing. It's 10.30 now, well, 10.40, I'm finally done updating the uh, distributor portal, which took me absolutely forever, what it feels like, which is probably why I was procrastinating it so much. Somehow I found some kind of pleasure in working on it, you know, it took me a while, like I said, but it was so just peaceful. I was, you know, we have this catalog, um, the company that I work for is a vendor and they have a rather impressive portfolio of products. And obviously they are updated all the time, right? To keep up with the market and all that. And yeah, so I basically, um, now I work on my laptop, obviously. Um, before I worked on iMac when we <laughs> lived back in St. Petersburg and this was much more convenient. But basically what I do is I split the screen into, oh, well, not split, but half of the screen is, uh, for example, I have this portal open and then on the other half I have um, the catalog uh, PDF 
and I just kind of compare all the products and you, like if I remember off the, top, off the top of my head I just um, go straightly uh, straight to the product descriptions and I update whatever needs to be updated but normally I just go one by one and I compare what's on the portal what's in the catalog and I make sure you know it's cohesive uh, yeah, so it was pretty peaceful, <laughs> you know, it's very nice and kind of even meditating, surprisingly. But I'm glad it's done uh, because it's been looming over me for a while. I generally am, I think, rather good with, uh, you know, doing tasks, working on uh, within deadlines, not missing them, not procrastinating. I mean, I'm pro I procrastinate, obviously, like everyone else. I'm not, a <laughs> um, I'm not a psychopath, of course I procrastinate, but I think I've come kind of a long way because many years ago, I think... I was much more mm, disorganized, yeah, not lazy, but I was kind of all over the place. And I think it took me <laughs> a lot, a lot. It's been a long road uh, to get more organized, more disciplined. And yeah, I kind of pride myself almost in uh, being able to do the work on time and do it rather well. Um, again, I'm not perfect. I'm making tons of mistakes, of course, but not not tons, but some of them. But um, yeah, and I think what probably helps me most, I think there are a few factors that help me keep up because also, you know, when you work on several projects, obviously the pressure is a bit higher than if you just have one job. So what I do is, first of all, I plan all the time, like not all the time, but I plan everything and I try to kind of um, yeah, estimate when I need to do what and it's not hard, it's not sexy but planning really helps because I feel like if you have a lot going on or if you want to have a lot going on you need to plan otherwise you just yeah you know you don't manage to complete anything or you complete like 30% of what you wanted and that kind of sucks <laughs> and you get overwhelmed and spiral into anxiety which is not nice um yeah so i plan also i um a lot some of the work i get is like ad hoc and urgent and last minute but thankfully uh, maybe a majority of my work is actually i i know about it in advance so for example with this project I'm working on, there is some workload that is, again, I get just in the moment and some of it is planned with the other project. Um, pretty much the entire workload uh, I get in advance for the month and then I just work through it. So I get I have a lot of those, you know, tasks that I already know about, even though I don't have to submit them for like weeks still. And what I do is I um, start working on them incrementally or sometimes I work on them in, like in advance. Um, I complete them way ahead of the deadline. If I know that I have time and energy and resources, I can just cross it off, you know, and not worry about it. And also if there's something bigger, that's also like I have, I don't really, I am not excited about starting and I kind of feel like procrastinating. I just tell myself that, okay, I have this maybe like, you know, I don't have to work on it for another few weeks, but what if today I just work on it for maybe 30 minutes, one hour, and then see what I can do, and then later it'll be easier for me. And that's how I trick myself into working in advance, you know, and doing things on time. Because really, yeah, if you... Uh, somehow, I don't know how it works, but for my brain at least, if I am doing some work, even if it's very complicated, very hard, takes a lot of energy, but if I know that it's... like. I don't have to submit it just yet, you know, I have the time. And if I start working on, on it today and if I don't finish, it's not the end of the world. This somehow gives me the confidence and the motivation to just work on it. And it just relieves the stress, I guess that's it. Yeah, and that's how I end up also, um, yeah, pretty good with my deadlines and completing tasks on time, even if they're time consuming, which is great. <laughs> because uh, again, yeah, when you have several uh, employers, it's kind of helpful <laughs> to be able to keep up with everything. And then also uh, another trick that I do, and if I think if you watch my videos, I probably talked about it before. I really like those Pomodoro Study With Me playlists. There are a few channels on YouTube. I'll link them in the description. Some of them are just like Harry Potter th themed, for example. Some of them are just random. I like those yeah Pomodoro sessions because they give me structure. They give me, um, yeah, I guess... Create, they create this vibe. I get to romanticize my work because it kind of resembles university anyways, right? Because I do a lot of research and then I write the papers, <laughs> papers, right? But articles most of the time. So it's, uh, yeah, it kind of feels like university a little bit. Plus with those study with me, with nice music, also those um, music or ambient sound, you know, they help me focus and concentrate on my work. And yeah, it's, it's just great. And I also like to, maybe I get... Sometimes I do those intense, like six or eight hour 
Pomodoro sessions and kind of try to do as much as possible in this day. For example, yes, today is Tuesday, yesterday was Monday, and I really like to just work a bit more on a Monday because I feel like it gives me a good start to the week. And when something late pops up later, I'm not overwhelmed, or if nothing pops up, then good, I just have a more relaxed few days, which is great. And so, yeah, so I do those Pomodoros on Mondays usually, and also I like to do, for example, a two hour Pomodoro session that I dedicated that, okay, I have those two hours to um yeah do something yeah task a and then uh once the time is up i'm gonna start another pomodoro and i'm gonna work on something else and that also helps me kind of uh you know not lose the momentum and just swiftly switch from one task to another because yeah i think the hardest part is when you finish something and then you kind of feel like you've deserved a break and then the break turns into a couple of hours and then somehow it's the end of the day and you've ended up just doing this one task which is annoying and I don't only switch uh, my playlists that I uh, work with, but I also switch locations. For example, now I'm at the desk and uh, we, my boyfriend and I will both work from home. So um, yeah, it's a struggle. We only have one desk in the living room and then there's um, a table in the kitchen, obviously. So I work here and there. And, and then we also have a rather comfortable sofa, which you'd be surprised how productive we both get, actually. It's just something about how you sit there. It's just making you, you know, you don't fall asleep basically, you continue working. Also there is the bedroom where I work on the bed even though I don't really enjoy it, but sometimes I do. And now it's a bit cold, but if it's hot I'm also working on the balcony, which is honestly amazing because yeah, <laughs> I get to enjoy the fresh air and a bit of sunshine, but also get work done and you know, what more can you ask for? But ultimately of course I think uh, what helps me focus on work and do the work and not procrastinate the most is the fact that I love my job. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I don't know if I'd be doing it for free, of course. I mean, unless it's for a charity or something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty much very happy with um, yeah what I did, what I'm doing because I used to have a kind of a different not career, but I did different type of work, which was um, yeah I think just meaningless and it's one of those useless jobs, <laughs> corporate jobs that uh, kind of you know there is maybe five percent of value and then the rest is just uh, corporate bullshit so this was not good for my soul now i get to create something out of nothing i get to write and i also work a lot on my own which i enjoy very much uh, even though i obviously have no problem talking to my colleagues and stuff like that but you know i like when i get to just sit down and focus and uh, not get distracted all the time so yeah those are my thoughts on productivity and what helps me stay kind of focused on work and now I need to, still for this project A, I need to draft uh, an article. Also, I don't need to, right? It's for the second half of May, actually, and today is 23rd of April. So it's not super urgent, but um, with this project, I am the author of all the articles. I write them fully, and sometimes there's a bit of input from somebody else, but usually it's just me. And um, I kind of write on behalf of the management and usually with them it takes a while for them to find the time to review the article to get back with their um, you know suggestions edits whatever and then i need to maybe rewrite it or just implement what they've suggested and then i need to send it again to them right for the final approval and then it goes to proofreader uh, we have a native speaker proofreader and um yeah then it goes to designer who needs to like design obviously the illustrations and things like that so it's a process right so even though i can maybe draft the article and finish it in a couple of days it can end up being weeks until it's approved which is kind of annoying and one of the parts which i don't enjoy so much but you know it is what it is right so that's why i like to draft those articles in advance at least a little bit so that um there's no you know last minute pushing in kind of chasing non-stop because that's annoying and I don't want to do that. So let me do that and I'll catch up with you later.
3.45 now and I've relocated to the bedroom because my boyfriend is having like back-to-back -back, uh, work calls, meetings. It's just better, I think, to take and he likes to take them at the desk as well. So I've uh, decided to move my grade here and honestly, after a few hours, good few hours at the desk, I feel like a change of scene is good for me. And last time I talked with you, I think, I was turning on this uh, Pomodoro, two hour Pomodoro session and I've tasked myself to write an article during those two hours, which I successfully did. So I wrote from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Another 45 minutes were spent on proofreading this article um, and the other one and then I sent them off to uh, my managers on the second job. So this is for project B. And with this second project I'm much more flexible. My work tasks are also, well, very limited, you know, I only really have to write articles, about maybe 15-20 of them per month. And also, uh, interestingly for this one, um, they also taught me how to use, I hope I'm not mispronouncing it, but I think it's called Ahrefs, that's how you pronounce it or something. So that's like this uh, website tool for keywords, um, a lot of SEO specialists use it. You kind of, yeah, basically get a lot of insight, a lot of data and analytics on keywords, right? Uh, matching terms, like, and you can use it for, I'm sure, many different things. But in my case, I'm uh, prepping little tasks for myself as a copywriter. So I research um, certain uh, pre-approved like uh, key, uh, keywords or key phrases, and I kind of look at how much potential they have, right? So what kind of um, additions, alternatives are there, and I created like a detailed outline of the task for all myself. I can also do it for other copywriters, but lately I've been doing a bit more work for them, so uh, basically somebody else is doing keywords um, and, and tasks for other copywriters and I just do it for myself. And yeah, it's a kind of fun, interesting part for me because I've not done it and I've kind of been interested in getting into the whole SEO thing a bit more, even though there are a lot of conversations and talks about, um, you know, the whole industry dying out, right? Because of AI, obviously, ChatGPT and um, similar products that they are introduced and basically a um, machine will be writing con um, articles, create content and we're gonna be jobless <laughs> in a couple of years. And who knows, you know, maybe we will be, I don't know. But uh, right now I don't think we will. Also, there are certain signals like, I think Google is now, um, you know, there, there were gossips, right? That Google is not uh, kind of highlighting the web pages that were, that it recognizes were written by AI as much as it would if a human wrote something, right? And it's not even about plagiarism, I think, as much, but just that um, yeah, the content that AI can create is not as good and also uh, if it's keyword heavy to a point where you can barely read the, the text, it doesn't make much sense, it's so SEO optimized, you know, like I don't, I think, uh, yeah, Google is ranking it lower than alternatives, so uh, that's kind of a good thing for me <laughs> for now. Right, yes, yeah, so, and I wanted to learn a bit more about SEO because uh, it's kind of, you know, we work in tandem with, uh, it, it works in tandem with copywriting and it's kind of potentially an interesting path for me if I ever want to diversify what I do or move away from copywriting completely, which I don't see myself doing now, but who knows. And um, it's actually been very interesting and I'm very grateful to this um, new team, right? I started working with them, I think, first in January was the first month and now it's April, so we're working for a almost four months and it feels like we've been partnering forever, you know, the cooperation is just amazing and there I started as a copywriter and then they kind of asked me if I'd be interested in doing a little bit of keyword exploring and just kind of, you know, all the jazz. I said yes, of course, because I was kind of interested in doing that, but I lacked, you know, opportunity, a practical opportunity or experience and I didn't really know where to start, so they kind of helped me with that, which I'm really, really super grateful for and I actually enjoyed doing that very much because you get to, you know, sit with this website research and like look for combinations and just come up, think about it and just try to yeah, come up with the best task for the copywriter that they can um, create the content that is meaningful to the reader but also will help achieve the corporate goals and things like that. It's, it's nice, I really enjoy it and hopefully I'll be able to do more of that maybe with this company or also with other companies too in the future and now that I've mentioned it, there is um, I don't know, guys, if you work with um, yeah um, marketing or if you just know about this company, but there's basically a company, Sam Rush, S E M Rush, and they have 
of course now that I want to show it to you I'm struggling to find it. Ah yeah, there it is. So they have those, like there's a, um, I mean I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I can link, leave a link as well. They have this kind of uh, academy of their own and they have digital marketing courses and there they have, oh now I see they have mastering YouTube search trends, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, they have a lot of, um, you know, basic courses, like those, I guess, a few lectures about um, SEO and how to like optimize this, optimize that, how to work with keywords so that um, yeah, it helps you again achieve your goals and targets and I am planning to start one of them I think either today or maybe tomorrow. I see that one course is five lessons and it's two hours, another course is four lessons and it's 34 minutes so you know it's really not extremely time consuming but um, I think you know they're one of the leaders on the market so I'm sure they have a lot of interesting information. They might be a bit generic though, which is fine for me because I'm an amateur, but if you already know what you're doing in that field, probably this would not be as beneficial as it would be for me. But anyways, and I, yeah, I think I still have quite a few, few things to do. I actually need to uh, research two key, more keyword, uh, key phrases for two remaining articles for this second client for the month. So I've done a total of 18 articles for them including the ones I wrote today. So there's two more and I could potentially start working on both of them today, but I don't know if I feel like it because it's almost 4 p.m. I will at least do the keyword bit for both and we'll see if I start writing anything. I sometimes find a lot of pleasure in writing, uh, starting writing at like 11 p.m., maybe 10 p.m. Um, there's something about the calmness of the evening, I don't know, if I'm in the mood, not always, sometimes I obviously like to spend time with my boyfriend, friends, read, sleep, eat, whatever, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's really nice. Similarly to how you can really get a lot of done in the morning because nobody's bothering you, in the same fashion in the evening you can also obviously focus on work because nobody's sending you Slack messages and things like that. But for now I think I'll take a quick break, maybe an hour long break, we'll see, because I'm, um, you know, even though I'm not a writer in a sense like Tolstoy or Hemingway is of course, but still it's a creative process and it takes energy out of you and you kind of need to, I don't know, restore it before you can continue working because if I were to start the next article now, which I can technically do, my personal experience tells me that it's gonna be a bad idea because I will just do it for many hours, I'll procrastinate, I'll be distracted with TikTok and whatnot and instead of that it's better to just take a break, even if it's an hour long and then I can write another articles in two hours because if I start now it will take me maybe, you know, three hours or four hours to write it, you know, so it'll be actually um, worse for me, I'll, it'll take me more time, but I will also not have a break, so it makes no sense. And I think I'll watch something on YouTube, because why not, and I think I'll snack, because I've not really eaten much, apart from this morning food, um, strawberries and um, pastry. And I will read one of the three books that I'm reading, I'm actually reading many more books simultaneously, but those three are in my bedroom. First is The Portrait of uh, a Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, it's a book based on real people um, and I, I don't want to go into too many details but I'll just um, say a few words about each of them. This one is very entertaining. It's about basically a girl who gets married off to a, an older guy. She's, I think she's 15, 14, 15 when she's married and uh, it's, it was supposed to be her sister's husband but the sister died unfortunately because of some, something, right? And so she gets married off to this older guy who is very possessive, very manipulative and very... I think he has like anger <laughs> issues as well. And it all happens in um, in Italy, in Florence and then in Ferrara and it's Middle Ages or something, maybe 17th, 18th century. It's not Middle Age by then, right? But anyways, yeah, so it's set in this historic scene, scenery and this lifestyle that they live is totally different and fascinating to, you know, kind of read about but also there's a lot of struggle with this girl because she's somewhat gifted, right? She's a great painter and she's she has a sharp mind but she's also very shy and awkward socially, I think. Plus she's a freaking kid, right? And so she's kind of trying to find her own self as she's growing, as she's just starting to become a woman and she's in this uh, drastic change of lifestyle because she used to live with her parents and with a lot of siblings and it wasn't always easy for her but it was her home, right? And now she's dealing with this man uh, and it's kind of hard, plus she, he's taking her to his court, right? He's a duke, I think. Yeah, I think he's a duke, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there is a lot going on there as well and she has to navigate those social 
things that are also complex for her. It's a very easy read and not not in a bad way, you know, not like um, like it was written for five-year-olds, but it's just very engaging. It keeps you uh, on the edge <laughs> and you want to know what's going to happen next. Now, this next book, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, I've, I've, as you can see, just yeah, my, barely made my way through the book. I'm on page 45 and it's more of a young adult book. And uh, the main character here is a boy who randomly, he goes to university and he randomly finds a book that um, has a chapter about his life. And he's pretty sure nobody witnessed this part of his life and so he's shocked and, you know, his whole life is turned upside down and now he's going to kind of try and uh, decrypt this weird book, this thing that's happening um, and I, at some point he'll end up in this weird library which is kind of its own different world and he's gonna be on a mission to like save it or whatever, you know. It's, yeah, it's a more, um, not kids book, but definitely a, an easier read and I'm, it's, it's very good when you don't really want to, I think, uh, worry about anything and you just want to read an interesting story, yeah. And lastly, Jonathan Franzen, Crossroads, I think I showed this book last week. I've made a bit of progress since then. I'm somewhere at the, almost, no, yeah, pretty much at the middle of the book. And it's been such a great read, oh my god, and at first um, we are introduced to this family, father um, and four of his, oh, three of his kids, one kid is, um, fourth kid is very small, so it doesn't count really, and we are uh, learning about all those kids, and the father, the father is a priest, and he has like a beef with another priest, and there is this crossroads, it's a youth, um, Christian youth community or something like that, and the beef is basically about who is more popular and this father of the family and the other guy we're we're not sure yet what's going on but they definitely both of them i think want to be leaders of like um, official and non-official leaders of the group and that creates a conflict resulting in the dead leaving this community after all and it's at the beginning so it's not a um, spoiler or anything like that and so we learn about him and the kids and there is a mother as well but she's kind of in the background and at first you get all those impressions about the family members but then the mother's chapter starts and oh my god is your world turned upside down yeah it's it's crazy how much my mind changed about all those people in the second part of the book that i've been reading and now we are i'm reading it with a few friends and now we're gonna read part number three during the weekend discuss it next monday and i'm sure my uh, you know we're gonna be introduced to a lot more now and probably will see people in different light once again. So it's a roller coaster, you know, it's very entertaining. And it all is set in uh, 70s in the US. So we have Vietnam War, which is not central, I think uh, by no means, at least not yet, but it's happening, right? It's on everybody's mind in the background. Plus this whole religious commu youth community thing where it's not really a traditional pr religious community. They don't really do much religious wise. It's more like a I don't know, one big mental health camp where people do all sorts of exercises and try to be better humans, better friends, better whatever, and they also do some communal work, so they're helping their local community, right? It's a lot, and yeah, I love it. I love every page of it. So I'm gonna go now and make myself a snack, think about, choose the book that I want to read, and I'll talk to you later.
Okay guys, it's 10 p.m. now. I think it's time to wrap up this vlog. I've uh, worked six to seven. Then Alex, my boyfriend, he ordered some McDonald's even though we have plenty of food at home, but whatever. And yeah, so I snacked just with ice cream um, and he had a full meal and we just watched some YouTube. And after that, I've been, yeah, I guess procrastinating a bit, just doing nothing. Um, and now I want to wash my face put on a mask, uh, read a book before I go to bed, which is gonna be maybe at 12 p.m. or something like that. Yeah, and I think it's time to just, yeah, end this video here because nothing exciting is gonna happen from now on. I could potentially, and I kind of feel like I'd love to continue working now. With six, instead of just working with keywords, I uh, prepped one uh, keyword set for a specific like key phrase for an article, and I decided to just start writing an article instead and I got into the swings of, swing of things, but obviously I didn't finish it because there was not enough time. And now I feel like I'm, I'd am i kind of love to finish it, but at the same time, you know, I have the energy and motivation and all that, but also I don't really want to do it <laughs> because the entire last week I spent um, just like that. I've been, you know, working, taking a break, working, taking a break, and then sometime between 10 and 11, and 11 I would write up or draft up another article. And that I did that because I really wanted to catch up with uh, my workload and uh, last week I ended up writing either 10 or 11 articles for just this one project, you know, so I aimed to write two a day and I did nine during weekdays and either one or two during the weekend, I don't even remember anymore, you know, so now I kind of feel like um, I want to take a break, even though I can literally see the light at the end of the tunnel, I only have two or like one and a half articles left until the end of the month for this project, but um, yeah, I, I don't want to rush it though, you know, because I feel like uh, I'm energetic now about it, but I might burn out if I continue like that, so yeah, I think I'll just finish it tomorrow because there's no rush anyways, and today instead I'll catch up on my reading and just have a chill evening, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that gave you a little glimpse into the life of um, a work from home tech copywriter. This is how my most days are going by. I some like at the, at the beginning of the month, I tend to do a lot more work, and um, yeah, I just enjoy doing those prints where I maybe work nine, ten hours a day. Um, for a few days, you know, just to kind of get ahead of the game, and then I slow down once I get a bit more tired or just. I feel like there's no real need to rush anymore. But today was rather chill, but still productive. It was a good day. So yeah, again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for um, yeah staying with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any things that you'd like me to talk about or show in the next video, please do. Also, by the way, I'm sorry I didn't really show you any um, like of my writing process or things like that. I mostly didn't do it because of, you know, obviously it's confidential and I can't really share companies' names or the topic, like anything basically, right? I, I want to respect and protect their privacy. So yeah, um, but uh, if you want to see anything work-related, non-work-related, let me know. And thanks again, have a good night, and I'll see you soon. Bye!